All right, now we have some more array methods to talk about. And um, just to be clear, when I use the word method, I'm talking about a function that is performed on some kind of object. So document.getElementById. That's a method. It is a function. It's not wrong to call it a function. But this is a method, whereas function, my function, like this, is not a method. Okay, so I don't want to confuse you further. Um, right now, it's not nomenclature. I think you need to spend too much time worrying about. But I want you to understand what I mean when I say method. When I use the word method, I'm talking about a function following a dot following an object. So we discussed the fact that arrays are actually disguised objects. So numArray.sort, that's a method. This is a function following a dot following an object. Okay, that's all I mean. So more array methods. One really popular one, or really easy one, is dot reverse. So let me go ahead and copy num array, paste it here, save, and in my console, let me call num array. So far, so good. And I'm going to run num array dot reverse. And this is going to return the array in reversed order. Speaks for itself, right? Pretty simple. So dot reverse is a way to reverse the order of an array. Something to keep in mind here is numarray.reverse actually mutates the original array. So anytime now, after running numarray.reverse, anytime that I call numarray, it remains reversed. It remains reversed. Maybe that's what you expect, and that's okay but you might have expected something different. You might have expected numarray.reverse to return the reversed version of the array while the original array remains in its original order. But that's not what happens. So think about what you might do if you wanted to reverse the order of an array, use the reversed array in some fashion, but keep or maintain the originally ordered array. How would you do that? How would you do that? Well, let's try this. Let's try var reversed array equals num array dot reverse. Is this going to work? Maybe this is only going to store this reversed array inside the reversed array variable but the num array variable is going to remain the same. Let's see if that works. So let's check reversed array first. Okay, reversed array is the reversed num array. What about num array? Num array has also been reversed. It is still being mutated. It's still being mutated. So what can we do here? The reality is we actually need an additional variable in a situation like this or an additional function in a situation like this to basically make a copy of num array. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's write a function called actually no, let's store this function in a variable. I'm going to call it var copied array equals function. And this function is going to take some array, any array, okay? That some array is an argument. And what it's going to do is it's going to run a for loop var i equals zero, as long as i is less than some array dot length okay sum array is the argument of this anonymous function 
we're assuming it's an array, some array dot length i plus plus. And what do we want this for loop to do? Well, here we're going to introduce another array method. Inside this function, we're going to create a new array and just leave it empty. We're just going to leave it empty. Okay, new array equals empty square brackets. So we created an array, but there's nothing in it. What we're going to do inside the function is insert every single item in our sum array argument into new array and then return it. So after the for loop we're going to return new array and this new array is what's going to be stored in copied array. To do that inside our for loop we're going to need to select new array and run dot push dot push and what are we going to push that's our argument we're going to push some array at the i index okay so there's a lot going on here it's okay if you're confused uh, it's going to be easier to see it in action but what we've done is we created a copied array variable we have stored a function in that variable which takes an argument that is some array and what this function does is it creates a brand new array it pushes every item in our argument some array into this new array effectively creating a copy new array is a copied array and then it returns new array. Now this return new array is important because when this function runs, this is the only thing that's going to come out of the function. All this code, all this code does is give new array a value of whatever sum array is. We're creating a copy of sum array out of new array and then returning it. So by the time if we execute this function, then by the time the JavaScript browser reads the copied array variable, it's simply going to contain whatever new array is at this point in time. Okay, and finally, the last thing that I want to do here is I want to make sure that copied array has been executed using num array as an argument. So I'm going to run copied array with an argument of num array. And then reversed array is going to contain copied array dot reverse. Okay, let me reload. Let's take this one step at a time. Okay, so copied array contains this function. Copied array using num array as a function, I mean as an argument, returns a copy of num array. And that's what we actually want to reverse. So go ahead and copy that. Replace it here. Okay, so copied array with num array as an argument plugs num array as in as the argument of this function and makes a copy of it. Okay, so copied array with num array as an argument returns this, an identical copy to num array, but it's not going to be the same array. So when I reverse it, it's not going to mutate num array. Okay, save, reload. 
reversed array. Okay, that looks good. Num array still retains its original order. All right, this is a complicated thing that we just did. So take some time to take a close look at it. Take some time to really think about it. I'm going to walk you through it one more time, and then we're going to move on. Okay, we created a num array variable, which we want to reverse, but we want to do so without changing the order of the original array. The way variables work is they're kind of like addresses. They're kind of like addresses. So if we reverse num array, it's actually going to change what's located at the other end of this address. It's actually going to mutate the array, and we don't want that in this case. We want to keep num array and simply create a new array, which is a reversed version, a reversed copy of num array. And so what we needed to do is create a method for copying num array and reverse that copy. The way that we did that is we created a variable which contains a function. And this function takes some array as an argument, any array, any array uh, imaginable as an argument. It creates an empty array. It runs a for loop which loops through the argument array, some array, and it pushes each item in some array to new array, one after another. So when i is 0, it pushes the first item in some array to new array. When i is 1, it pushes the second item in some array to new array. When i is 2, it pushes the third item in some array to new array. And at the end of this function, it returns new array. The function, the, I mean the, the copied array itself. Okay, so executing copied array, this variable, with our num array as an argument, causes this statement to evaluate to a copied version of num array. Then we execute the reverse method on that copy which gets stored in the reversed array variable. Okay, try walking through this again, try coding this yourself, try really giving it some thought, and absolutely you must try visualizing it. Okay, and if it's helpful, let me just demonstrate a little more simply how dot push works. I'm gonna create a var fruit array of apple, banana and kiwi and now I'm going to push to fruit um, pineapple okay and now if I call fruit it contains four items pineapple has been pushed it has been added to the end of the fruit array and I can do this with as many different fruits as I want mango. Now if I call fruit, apple, banana, kiwi, pineapple, mango. Okay, so dot push simply adds whatever is in these parentheses to the array. So if sum array is num array, the num array i, num array 0 is going to be 52. 52 gets pushed to new array. Num array 1 is going to be 79. 79 gets pushed to new array. Num array 2 is going to be 33. 33 gets pushed to new array, etc., etc., etc. So this whole function ends up creating a copy of num array in new array. And we don't have to use num array. We've set up this function that we can use any array imaginable. So now that we have it, why don't I try running copied array on fruit so this should make a copy of the fruit array and reversing it and this gives us a reversed version of fruit now if I call fruit fruit is still okay it's still in its original order so how about I create a reversed fruit 
variable and set it equal to copied array on fruit dot reverse. Reversed fruit is now the a copy of fruit in reverse order. So I have non-destructively reversed the fruit array and stored it in a very accessible place. Okay. This has been a complex 15 minutes. So please rewatch this video if you're not confident. Uh, what's going on here is extremely important, but understandably complex. So give it some time. Let your brain process it for a little bit. Uh, try to allow it to sink in for a while. Try practicing it yourself. Or try creating a brand new function stored inside a variable that does some other task. I mean, if we really needed to, we could actually return not new array, but new array dot reverse. And then we could even get rid of this piece of code right here. To me, that makes even more sense. I wish I'd thought of that 10 minutes ago. <laughs> anyway, I hope this has been helpful. Please take the time to review this video closely if you feel a little lost. It's okay if you do, but reach out for some help or for some additional explanation of this code uh, if you're unsure. It's not a whole lot of code to explain, so it's very, it would be very easy to walk you through it one more time.